Hello, my name is Nasir and welcome to another tutorial in Data Vigo channel. In one of the previous tutorials, I demonstrated how to use two Wikipedia APIs in order to extract data quickly. The example I used was about extracting the summary of 500 pages on Wikipedia about the US election, in which you can find a screenshot of the JSON file that we saved as the final product of that tutorial. Once we extract the text, it is time to apply some NLP techniques. For example, you would be interested to create a word map frequency, such as the one that you find in this screenshot. So as you can see here, we have the name of the words and the number of times it has been repeated in the text, which has actually a lot of applications in the text classification and machine learning. The other thing that you would be interested is the visualization of the word frequency. So here are two examples. So in one of them, we have actually visualized the ranking of the word Florida in the text that we have, which is uh, 92. And another one for Texas, which is 59. It means that Texas actually has been repeated more than Florida in the text that we have. So we can actually do quite a lot of things when we are dealing with the text. So this is the final outcome and the final product of this video. I'm going to demonstrate using Python and the Spacey library how we can actually create a word map and also visualize the word frequencies based on the word that we are interested. So I hope you find this video valuable. So please stay until the end of this video until I show you how to do this. So let's begin with the task. So I'm going to give you a very quick review on what we did in the previous video. So if you do remember, we uh, talked about the Wikipedia APIs and uh, we use two APIs here in order to extract data from, Wik uh, from Wikipedia based on the keywords that we entered. Uh, this is how it works. You put the name of the keyword uh, that you like. It's similar to Google search and it gives you the search result uh, based on the US election. Uh, which was the example I used. So there are 500 pages in the result and uh, you find the heading for each page. So what I did in the previous video was that uh, I wrote a code in order to store the summary of every Wikipedia page into a JSON file uh, and in a dictionary format. And the summary of the page is everything that is presented before the table of contents. So it iterates through all these pages and extracted the text uh, that you can find in here. So this was the final code that uh, I wrote here. So I stored the data in a dictionary and for uh, each item in the search result, which is the US election and the number of results is 500. Otherwise by default is 10. So if you look at this one, wikipedia.search US election, it gives you 10 search results by default, but I have increased it to 500. And then I store the summary of each item into a variable called my file, or you know, it could be anything. And the length is 500. This is what we expected. So uh, this is our variable, my file. If you want, you can also store it in the JSON file and save it into your local machine. And this is the code that we wrote. So later, I don't need to run uh, this code at all. So I can just ask JSON to uh, read the JSON file that I have in here. So you import the JSON and then you open it and put it um, in the writing mode if you want to actually uh, write something. Otherwise, you put it in a reading mode, which is the R. Anyway, so for um, reading the JSON file, you don't need to run this code because, because this is for writing on the uh, JSON file, not reading. So all you need to do is to open um, and then the name of the JSON file and then you load it uh, like that. So this json.loadf is, is um, equal to like my file, so it doesn't matter uh, for this video which one I choose. So then you need to actually import a library which is very applicable in natural language processing and that's called Spacey. The best thing to do is to do the Google search and it takes you to Spacey documentation 
and it gives you the quickest start based on your operating system and what you need to do. So on your terminal, uh, you need to install Spacey using this code. Uh, so you go to your Mac or uh, Windows or Linux and you type this code. And then there is a language model that we need to download as well. And here is the code that you need to write. The language model is called EN Core Web SM, which stands for small. I have done the MD, which is the medium one. There is also LG, which is the large one. So uh, for, for the sake of this video and this example, uh, either of them would do like the small one or the medium one. You can actually try installing the large one as well. And uh, this is how you start. You import the library and then you load the uh, language model and save it into a variable. So to just give you an example. So if I create a variable called sentence and then copy and paste uh, this one, this sentence, okay. what I can do actually, I'll try to um, load this sentence into the NLP uh, language model. Okay. And uh, I do that so it looks like this so everything is fine it's reading the sentence okay so let's show let's actually show you a very a small example first uh, but the question is that what do we need to do so it depends on the purpose in most of the um, NLP applications or it's better to say that in all of the NLP applications this is what you need to follow uh, first of all we need to tokenize the sentence or the text. It means that in order to uh, make computer understand what we're going to do, we need to actually break our sentence into pieces or tokenize it, which means that we put it in the list and then separate it by a comma like this. So this is the first step. I'm going to show you how to do it. And then you can also see that everything has also been converted into the lower case. So uh, the word the, United States, etc. They're all in the lower case. And the reason for that is that for the computer, you know, it should be something very consistent. So it's better actually everything to be in the lower case. And it wouldn't make any difference if we if we convert uh, all these words into a lower case. Um, there is a process called lemmatize or lemmatization in the natural language processing. It means that not only we need to do the lower case um, of the words, but we should also convert the words into its root. Uh, so what is the root of like the verb was? It's be, okay? Or if you have like a plural form, so this one actually doesn't have any plural. Um, the, the word space here actually is plural, but uh, the space here actually has been clever enough because we have to keep this word states as plural, otherwise, um, you know, it would have a different meaning. But if, for example, you know, um, we had the word uh, elections, then it would have been converted to election, so removing the S uh, as part of the uh, limitization process. So once you do that, then we need to get rid of some stop words and also punctuation. So some words actually, you know, their existence wouldn't make any difference in terms of um, either visualization or, you know, training the computer uh, because these words appear in every text. Uh, such as the in English language is something that you see it in every text. So it, it doesn't really make any difference. Uh, if you want, you can even, you know, remove the numbers. I mean, for this one, we have kept the numbers. But if you think that, you know, they're not relevant, uh, you can remove the numbers or the years uh, in here. But I mean, in this example, we have kept the numbers and the years as well. And you can see that the, all the punctuations uh, have also been removed. So this punctuation here, it's, it's not um, produced in this stage. So once we remove the stop words and the punctuations, then we are actually ready for our project. So first we need to write some codes in order to complete the tokenization, then lemmatizing and finally removing the stop words and the punctuation. So let's see how we need to do that.